Hello guys and welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and started cross-examining Adrian Andrews, and things are going okay-ish. We've made a few new revelations, and so now she's going to tell us about uh, some sort of secret that Unguard had that Juan Carita would have tried to tell the public. From the moment I saw the crime scene, I had a feeling that Matt was the murderer. Matt had to kill Juan no matter what and he didn't have an alibi for what he was doing at the time of the murder. My thoughts were confirmed by the evidence, of course, the button and the knife. But I'm Matt's manager, so I felt that I had to protect him. Hmm, this does account for everything. Well, I am the logical type. We're finally seeing her true self. She's more nervous than a scared rabbit. If there are no objections, I feel that I can pass a verdict based on this testimony. Now then, Mr. Wright. If you please. Looks like somehow everything has swung on the opposite end of the scale again. That just means I have to put my weight into this and turn the logic upside down. From the moment I saw the crime scene, I had a feeling that I was the murderer. Would you say that was your intuition speaking to you? Don't confuse my methods of reasoning with your own. Ugh. If you want to prove that someone did something, you need three things. Three... things? A motive, an opportunity to commit the crime, and finally, decisive evidence. And if you think these three things through, the answer becomes quite clear. You should have already known that, Phoenix. They didn't teach that to us in school, at least not what I, from what I remember. May I continue now? Meta to go on no matter what. So would you say this need came from the press conference? Yes. Do you know why Juan chose that event at the hotel for the conference? Because that was when he could cause the most damage to the public's beloved Madame Guard. And you knew of this plan, didn't you, Miss Andrews? Yes, because I was the one who set up the conference and prepared the costume. But I'm sure Mr. Wingard himself didn't know anything about a press conference. Oh really? Can you show me any proof that he didn't know about the press conference? Anyway, the important thing here is that the information was not in your testimony. Yes, I agree. Miss Andrews, please correct your testimony if you please. I'm grasping at straws now, are we, Mr. Wright? I know what his motive was, but I don't have any way to prove I'm right. Has Mr. Ungard done something to hurt or betray you personally? Why do you ask? You were the one who helped Mr. Carito with his press conference. That event was supposed to bring down Mr. Engard, but you still helped out. The person on trial right now is Mr. Engard, right? What the witness was thinking, helping the victim with his plan, is none of our concern. In any case, this means that the defendant had a motive to kill. Why do I keep doing this to myself? He didn't have an alibi for what he was doing at the time of the murder. But didn't you already testify earlier that Mr. Engard was taking a nap in his room? Are you telling me now that that too was a lie so you could cover for Mr. Engard? I'm not telling you anything of the sort. When I went to get him for the show, he honestly was sleeping. However, as to whether he was sleeping the entire time, I cannot say. I was too busy setting up the stage at the time. Hmm. I keep trying, but I can find no flaws with what Miss Andrews has said. I can't say the same for some people here in this courtroom, however. And the judge is glaring straight at Mia. He's glaring at you, smart guy. <laughs> My thoughts were confirmed by the evidence, of course. The button and the knife. You can hardly call the knife decisive evidence. The fingerprints on the knife could very well be a clever camouflage. Then, what about the button? The button? It's clear from the crime scene that the victim and the murderer fought, and during the fight, the killer ripped the button from the German ninja's costume. You are talking about this button, correct? That button was found in the pleats of Matt's Hakama, isn't that correct? I would think that m makes it very decisive evidence. Ah, uh, Looks like you were outfoxed again, Mr. Wright. Anyway, the knife doesn't prove a thing. Please fix your testimony. I can't stand the sight of a man who can't gracefully accept his defeat. 
Thank goodness Mia can still look at me. With an icy stare, yes. Miss Andrews, for Mr. Wright's sake, please add this information to your testimony. That button was torn off of Juan during his fight with Matt. And how do you know that? When the ends of the threads on the button and the costume were matched up, they were found to fit together perfectly. Or so I heard. Hmm, I've heard that before too. But why would Miss Andrews know about this case down to such a fine detail? Don't look at me like that. Just because I'm prepared and you are not. Ah, and I thought I had her this time for sure. If there's anything to trip her up on, it has to be here. But where and what? But I'm Matt's manager, so I felt that I had to protect him. But what you really did was stab the guy in the back, didn't you? <laughs> and at the worst possible time. Who's to say she really stabbed the guy in the back, as you put it? And this witness could have disclosed things about Mr. Unguard at any time. Why then would she wait until there was a large audience before doing so? Isn't this... It's the same reason why Mr. Corita planned such an elaborate conference. Miss Andrews wanted to cause Mr. Unguard as much damage as she possibly could. This witness bears ill will towards the defendant. This isn't the Phoenix Wright Wax Philosophical of Power Hour. And please, stop slandering the witness. As I expected, Miss Andrews' testimony seems pretty solid. Really? Because to me it sounded a little wishy-washy. Wishy-washy? Well, I guess we'll see if I press a little more. You should know this by now, but you'll need strong, decisive evidence to make her talk. Got it, Chief. I'm gonna pin you down this time, Miss Andrews. So the solution here is that... Uh, when you go to statement 4 and press it, you'll get this new statement where she says that the button was torn off of Juan during his fight with Matt. Uh, but the contradiction here is uh, Juan's autopsy report. This is the victim's autopsy report. It's cl it clearly states that the cause of death was strangulation by a scarf. S strangulation? The knife stab to the victim was done after the victim had already died. And what does that mean? Let's examine the evidence. This button has the victim's blood on it. Which would mean that it was ripped off of the costume... when? After the knife was stabbed into the victim. Exactly. Which means... It is impossible that this button was torn off during the victim's final struggle. Because the victim was strangled to death in that fight! Uh... That's right, Miss Andrews. There's no way this button was ripped off during the struggle. This button was consciously pulled off of the victim's already dead body. Order. Order! What is the mean- What is the meaning of this right? So what if the button was torn off the body after the victim had already died? What does that change? Let me ask you one simple question, Mr. Edgeworth. Why was the button torn off? What purpose did that serve? What purpose? We now know that this button was not torn off during the fight, so the murderer took the time and effort to purposely rip this from the victim's body. That would mean that the murderer had something in mind, wouldn't it? Mr. Wright, does this mean... Does this mean that you know what this murderer wanted to do with this button? What was it? To pin the crime on guard. There's only one logical reason for doing something like that. It was to pin the crime on Mr. Unguard. There's no way anyone would put a bloody button in their own pants. That's right. Mr. Unguard was set up. By the real killer, of course. And the real murderer is... Well, Mr. Wright, who in the world is the real killer, then? Finally, I can't believe I managed to bring this trial all the way up to this point. Phoenix, you can't let your guard down yet. Not until the very end. The real killer, the person who planned to f frame Mr. Unguard, is Adrian Andrews. Miss Adrian Andrews. I choose you! You are Mr. Karita's killer! Wh what? 
Order. Order. Order! Mr. Wright! This is a very grave matter. Do you have any evidence that supports your charge? Any evidence? All of the evidence points to Miss Andrews. Wh how preposterous. Can't stick any of that on me. I can't, can I? Would you care to test me? Then, what about this knife? The knife was used to stab the victim after he had already been strangled to death. It was used to throw suspicion onto Mr. Ungard, naturally. The knife covered in the defendant's fingerprints could only be taken from his room. And the only one who had dinner with him, and knew which knife to take, was you! Tch. Then... What? What about the button that was found in Matt's Hakama? This button was removed from the victim's body after he had already died. The only people who could have done so were, th were the person who found his body or the killer. However, if Mr. Engard was the real killer, there's no way he would have put such incriminating evidence in his, ho in his own Hakama. Ah! The only person who could have put this button into Mr. Engard's Hakama is the person who went to wake him from his nap, which is you yet again, Miss Andrews. I see. What about the empty guitar case? That is also another piece of evidence that incriminates Miss Andrews. That costume was used to hide the real killer's identity as they fled the crime scene. Now, who could have known that there was just such a costume inside the guitar case? It could have only been the person who prepared the costume for the victim. And that person is you, Miss Andrews. No, I... But Miss Andrews' fingerprints were nowhere to be found on the guitar case, and it was you who proved that she was not wearing gloves at the time. Th that's right. That's because she did not intend on leaving any prints. If anyone had found out that she had touched the case, they would have asked her why. So to avoid leaving any prints, she used a towel or something else to open it. But, the glass of tomato juice is a different story. Miss Andrews purposely left her fingerprints in the glass to show that yes, indeed, she was the classic day's discoverer of a dead body. <laughs> ah! And to top it all off, there is this photo. A photo of the killer as they exited the scene of the crime. No reasonable person on Earth can believe this Nickel Samurai is Mr. Ungard. He would be much too short for his own costume if it was him. <laughs> Speaking of how tall people are, Miss Andrews, you're also kind of short in stature, are you not? P please stop. Well, how about it, Miss Andrews? <laughs> I've got her this time. Miss Andrews? I I I refuse to testify. What was that? Th there's a law. It says I can't be forced to testify about something, if it can incriminate me. Well, yes. You are absolutely correct, Miss Andrews. The law does provide us with a way to avoid self-incrimination, by allowing a witness to not testify if the testimony can cause damage to themselves. W what? Pleading the fifth is not something most people would think to do on the spot. Actually, thinking back to yesterday in Mr. Ungard's room, Adrian Andrews. Y yes Think hard about what we just discussed, understood? Uh, all right. That's it. That's when Francisca planted this idea into her head. She must have told Miss Andrews to not testify if things look bad. You did a good job proving everything up to this point, Phoenix. But there's still one thing you haven't done. Something I haven't done? <laughs> What's wrong, right? Are you finished already? Run out of evidence? What is so humorous, Mr. Wentworth? I'm sure you realize this as well, Your Honor. But everything the good lawyer here has proven up to this point is meaningless. What? Everything you have proven is circumstantial. Circumstantial? Yes, circumstantial. You have yet to prove a single piece of definitive proof. Proof that Miss Andrews did in fact harbor a wish to murder Mr. Corita. 
Miss Andrews, you... Did you want to kill Mr. Corita? I believe this may lead to me incriminating myself, so I will abstain from answering. But Miss Andrews, if you do that, it would be the same as admitting your guilt, don't you think? Maybe so, or maybe not. There's nothing to prove it either way. Besides, you don't even know what crime I would be guilty of due to my silence. No! She's taking that defiant attitude again. M Mia, what should we do? Somehow we've landed in the worst possible situation. I think we have reached a certain conclusion at this point in time. Miss Adrian Andrews has refused to testify, and the defense's theory that she is the actual murderer has not been fully substantiated with solid definitive proof. But that's not true! In this situation, there is only one thing this court can do, and that is to declare a recess. Recess? I request that both the prosecution and the defense look further into this matter. And at tomorrow's trial... T tomorrow We don't have a tomorrow. If we don't get a not guilty verdict today, then... Please wait, Your Honor. Th that's not necessary. The trial... Please continue the trial. What are you sweating for? Your client is getting one more day to live, isn't he? That's... That's not it. This isn't about that. Edgeworth, I know you know who the real killer is. Please, let the trial continue. If I don't get the verdict, then Maya... But it's impossible to continue as long as the witness refuses to testify. Now then, this court is... It is not impossible for this trial to continue. Mr. Edgeworth... What are you? It's true, Miss Andrews holds the right against self-incrimination. However, if the topic of conversation was something unrelated to whatever she may be guilty of, then she has no right to withhold testimony. Y yes, that is very true, but... Actually, there is one little thing that I'm curious about. Miss Andrews. When you found the victim's dead body, you poured yourself a glass of juice. Yes, and? I can't help but think how unnatural that is. Usually when one finds a body, they are shaken up, not stirring a glass of juice. So my actions were unusual, but I've already... Before you speak, I want to state that you, if you have a reason behind your actions, I would like you to testify to that effect. Testify. Your Honor, I would like to request that the witness testify again as to what happened when she first discovered the victim's body. Whatever we find out in this testimony should in no way implicate the witness. Hmm. I don't know what it is about Edgeworth today, but I can't get a good read off of him. Is he a friend or foe? I just don't know. The court acknowledges the prosecution's request. Miss Andrews, if you please. And we'll just have to listen to Adrian Andrews testify about that in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!